Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Jerry Levine over at Pack TV's Test Kitchen, and uh, we're going to be doing uh, some salads and some uh, dr salad dressings, vinaigrettes today. Uh, and we are patched live into uh, Center for Athletic uh, Active Living uh, with Marcia R Richards over there, and she is our nutritionist. And in, I'm going to turn this over to the nutritionist. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's show. So as Jerry mentioned, this is going to be devoted to salad dressings. So one of the most important things um, I want to share is we're going to talk about fats, but more so healthy fats. So the dressings that Jerry will be preparing consist of healthy fats. They're also low in salt, which contribute sodium to our diet, which is not something we want to have a whole lot of. All of the recipes are available at healthyplymouth.org. Previous show's recipes and many more recipes are also available at healthyplymouth.org. After Jerry finishes preparing the salad and the dressings, I'll be back and we'll talk a little bit more about healthy and not so healthy fats. So I'm gonna send it back to you, Jerry, and we'll watch your preparation of salad and for delicious dressing. Thank you very much, Marcia. Uh, I would also like to announce that we have a guest here. Ethel is uh, from the, the Senior Center, and uh, so she may ask a few questions. Uh, we like questions. First thing, what we're going to do is we're going to try to make some salad dressings that will are healthy, uh, low sodium, low fats or correct fats, and uh, low sugar. Reason being is they're going to be a lot healthier than what you would get in the supermarket. So read the labels. That is critical. What do we need for our salad dress? Our salad first. We have romaine lettuce. We have my favorite chef's knife. We have a mandolin. A mandolin is we're going to take the mandolin and we're going to use it this way. Originally came out of France and uh, it's going to help us do the slicing and dicing. So first thing. We'll put this off to one side, uh, and you'll notice that we're using romaine. I like romaine because it has interesting flavor to it. So the romaine has been washed, so there's no sand on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my French chef's knife. I'm going to cut it down the center. Notice how I'm looking at it so I don't cut my fingers off. And I'm going to slice. Notice the rocking motion, and I'm working my fingers away. Okay, now we've got two and a half cups done, and we're going to add some canned chickpeas, good uh, source of protein. Do you rinse those? They, uh, they have, the canned chickpeas were drained out of the can, and then they were rinsed with cold water. Okay, now we're going to add some uh, cherry tomatoes. You'll notice that some of my tomatoes here have been sliced. Okay, and some are not, because the small ones I didn't slice, because I, I happen to like to take one of these little guys, put it in my mouth, and there's a big pop, and all the juices go flooding in, and it's dynamite. Okay, how do we cut, what shape, uh, when I cut one of these things? Notice how easy it is. It's just take the knife, keep it away from the fingers, go forward and back, and it's done. Okay, now it goes in there. Excellent. Okay, next thing we're doing is cucumbers. Well, let's try something with a mandolin. Okay, cucumber cut into a quarter. These are uh, English cucumbers. And notice what's happening. See what's going on down there? Nice little slices. And we'll do another one. And we'll do another one. I'm leaving a little bit uncut because one does not want to slice one's finger off with a mandolin. Uh, besides, we've got red tomatoes in there and we, that's all we really need for red. <laughs> and there we go. We're rolling along nicely here. And take the knife. Notice what I'm doing. And it goes. Excellent. What if you don't have a mandolin? If you don't have a mandolin, then learn how to use the chef knife, okay? Or 
And another knife which might be a little bit easier to work with is called a, a, a Japanese uh, Santoko. And it's about this long uh, from here to here to the back. And it's got a flat center. The Japanese t tend to chop. The, the Europeans tend to rock. So we put that in there. That was a question from Ethel, by the way. <laughs> Ethel, ask anything you'd like. I'm here to tell you what I know. Maybe something that I don't know. OK, celery. And we're rolling along with celery. Do you string that first, or just do I do what? String it. Uh, if, if you'll notice, there's no strings. And yeah. why isn't there any strings? Because I keep the string on the upper part. Okay. Okay. So we've got that over here, and we're going to just put this into there. So basically, we're done with this part. And we're going to put that right over there so it's out of the way of the camera. And we're going to talk about vinaigrettes. Vinaigrette is a combination generally of three parts oil and one part of vinegar or acid. Acid is lemon juice, lime juice, any of those things. Okay? And the reason and one of them is water, a water phase, which is the acid or the vinegar, and the other is an oil phase. Okay. What ends up happening is a water and oil do not like to mix. So we use something called an emulsifier. And I've used a very small amount of emulsifiers because I did not want, I wanted to keep the calorie levels down and the sodium levels down. So the, emulsif the purpose of an emulsifier is to keep the whole thing mixed. Now you'll notice that this one has already been mixed and uh, it has separated a little bit. But if I shake it using one of my favorite shakers, which is a jelly jar, you'll also notice that I have another jar here. And this is the jar that I actually mix my, uh, my vinaigrette in and I, then I will pour it into here. Now look at that, that's a beautiful emulsion. See, it's completely, it, uh, completely emulsified, it's not separating. This will hold for about 20 minutes or so. And that's all I really care about. So, uh, let's talk about different types of oils. Uh, the common oil most people use is probably extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil has a really nice flavor to it, uh, and it, it does nice things with an Italian type of a dressing. Now, what happens if we have something, uh, we want an oil that has little or no flavor to it? We're going to use canola, or we're going to use corn. They're what are called neutral oils. And so that works fine. But there's walnut oil that has a nice walnut flavor. There's almond oils. So there's a variety of all of these things. So you go to your market and you say to yourself, I want to be creative, so I'm going to use almond today. But, uh, and the same thing with all of our, our vinegars. The mildest vinegar that we have is what is called rice wine vinegar. It doesn't even taste like vinegar. And, uh, but then we can do we can use balsamic, we can use apple, and there are a number of them to use. And well, when you get the recipes, you can see that we've made up four recipes, and they're a different theme for each recipe. Uh, the other things that you can do is, uh, is adjust the salt and the pepper level. And I like to use fresh ground pepper, and I like to use it very coarse. Uh, but you don't have to. And uh, you can also, in an Italian, you can put in some dried basil. In, in a, a Chinese, you can put in a little bit of cilantro. Uh, and there's a number of things. Just let your mind wander and just do different things. Okay, first salad dressing. And that's what this one happens to be. Notice that it's still emulsified. Good. So, this is called a white wine vinaigrette. And it is basically made with um, 
uh, virgin olive oil and white wine vinegar, which is a relatively mild vinegar. There is red wine vinegar, there's sherry wine vinegar. There's a whole pile of them. And we have one tablespoon of low or light mayo and one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. I like Dijon mustard, and I tend to like the coarse Dijon mustard that has the little seeds in it, but you don't have to. You can also use the hot dog mustard, the yellow stuff. And then we finish it off with salt and, uh, and a little bit of ground pepper. We then put all these things into here, into my mixing jar, and we shake. And we shake, and you take a look and you see, okay, there's a little tiny bit of mayonnaise there, so we shake a little bit more. And then we pour it off into here. Now, what we're going to do is, and we're going to do this at the very end because I want to go through the various vinaigrettes. But one important thing, don't dress the salad until you're just about ready to use it. Okay. And then the last thing you do is you give it a real good shake. Okay. Next salad dressing. Balsamic vinegar vinaigrette. Okay. So we have a, we're still using extra virgin olive oil. We're using balsamic vinegar which is a darker vinegar. It also has a nice little sweetness to it. It's got some great flavors. Do not use the cheapest balsamic vinegar because you're not going to like it. But you don't have to buy the one that costs $75 for an ounce. Buy something that's maybe like eight or $10 for four ounces and you're going to really enjoy it. Uh, this also has a combination of, uh, of may mayonnaise as well as Dijon mustard. And uh, certainly you can substitute a different type of mustard if you'd like. And there is some uh, salt and ground uh, pepper. And in this one, we've put in some dried basil because we want a little bit of Italianiness to it. The basil complements the balsamic vinegar. Do you use dried rather than fresh for a reason? Uh, am I using dried? Dried rather than the fresh basil? Uh, if during the summer uh, summertime, which is what I would do, I would go into my garden where I've got oregano and basil and, and a, about 10 other different things, herbs that are going, and uh, I would do the same. Uh, you know, what, what's really important is that the amount of dried versus the amount of fresh is very different. The only way you're going to know this is by tasting it. So. I recommend everyone carrying, which I forgot to bring with me, a little spoon over here in your chef jacket, which you don't have to have, and you take your little chef jacket and your spoon and you taste and you say, ah, a little bit more fresh basil. So you get out your knife and you add some more basil to it. Good question. Okay, uh, next recipe, next vinaigrette. Chinese sesame oil vinaigrette. Okay, sesame seeds. Sesame seeds, are, uh, the oil is generally roasted, has a really nice fruitiness to it and a roasted flavor and it gives you something that works really well with a, a Chinese salad and if you want to put some, uh, some chicken into this and you want to put some chow mein noodles, you can put some chow mein noodles into it also. So basically, and what we're doing is we're going to be using a combination of sesame oil and corn oil. And the reason I've used half, half and half of the, the two oils is because the sesame oil is very strong, very dominant. So I'm going to cut the flavor back a little bit with the corn oil. And then we're using the white wine, oh, excuse me, the rice wine vinegar. Okay. Our emulsifiers, mustard and mayo, and a little bit of soy sauce, but I didn't add salt. Soy sauce has got salt in it, sodium in it. So that would give you that flavor and an herb, cilantro. Okay. Cilantro gives a nice Chinese, even uh, the Mexicans use it. It's also used in Eastern Europe, but there's a really nice uh, flavor to the cilantro. So, again, you put it in your jar, you shake it up, stick it into your, your container, and away you go. And our final uh, vinaigrette is called Fruity Apple Cider Vinaigrette. So now we're switching to a different type of vinegar. We're switching to a different type of, uh, 
oil, but we're still we're going to use a little bit of corn oil in there. So we have apple cider vinegar, which has a really nice flavor to it. We're going to add uh, corn oil to that. Uh, our two emulsifiers, mayo and uh, and mustard, but we are going to add a little bit of salt, and that's it, and that's the whole thing, and we just take it and there's a nice fruitiness to it, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to dress this now. As you noticed, I tossed things in here, and I didn't mix, but. Watch the mixing, it's really critical. And as I mentioned before, what we want to do is we want to shake. We want to start pouring, and you'll notice that I'm a minimalist, which means that I don't want to have it overdressed. So how long will that dressing keep? Uh, you can put this in the refrigerator for probably a week. And if you're very careful and you get some separation and it won't go back because it's cold, which you, which you probably won't, you can take the top off and microwave it for about 30 seconds or so. And then it, it'll go back into suspension. Now, if we were doing the Chinese, we would put the chow mein noodle. So we're going to fake this one. This is going to be Italian, but we're doing Chinese noodle. Chinese so. Italian. <laughs> and there we are. We have a lovely salad. And the smells are dynamite here. Yes. So. Yes. Do we have questions, Mark? It looks Martha? beautiful. Thank you. It looks absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to see if anyone has questions, and then I would like to talk a little bit about fat. So does anyone have any questions about preparation? So Jerry, the question is, why not rip the lettuce versus cutting it with a knife? Uh, you know something? That can be done. And I'm not against that. Uh, I tend to like, if, if, if you don't mind me putting my fingers in the salad, it's the, see the sizes that I'm looking for? These are the sizes. And I prefer to use the knife. You'll notice that I took the romaine and I cut along the, the long axis. And then I can control the width of what I have here. I don't like a piece of lettuce that is so big that you can't get it into your mouth and it's running down the front of your nice beautiful, expensive uh, shirt or dress. <laughs> so there's the answer to that. Yes, Cindy has a question. Yeah. So does a steel knife bruise the lettuce? Uh, to be truthful with you, I have not found that uh, happening. I don't think so. I will tell you, though, a, uh, a dull knife is going to destroy a tomato. Yeah. I think it's dull. Yeah. And so yeah. make sure the knife is, uh, is sharp. And sharp. Yep. Okay. Sharp. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's destroying it, no. All right. Excellent. So because I'm a dietitian, I love to talk about nutrients. So I want to just highlight a couple of things about these dressings. Number one, um, fats are not bad. We kind of always hear how bad fat are, but we really need to have a certain amount of fat in our diet for a number of reasons. Fat in the diet helps keep us full. We use fat in our diet for the energy that we need to move around for our heart to beat, for our lungs to work, for our brain to work. Fats are also needed to absorb a lot of nutrients. Many nutrients, especially some of the vitamins, are called fat soluble. So you need to have some fat in your diet in order to absorb them. So fats aren't bad, but some of them are better than others. So I want to talk very quickly about three types of fat. First is trans fat, the worst that you can have. It's man-made. If you see the words partially hydrogenated oil in an ingredient list on a label, it has trans fat. 
this type of fat is being phased out of the yeah. supply, but it does contribute to heart disease. So do your very best to stay away from trans fat. The next two fats are categorized as saturated or unsaturated. Saturated fats are usually from animal fat. They're hard at temperature. So if you think about cooking bacon and pouring the grease into a can, it sits on the counter, what happens to it for a little bit? It gets solid, it's a saturated fat. So typically saturated fats are from animal products with the exception of coconut oil and palm oil. A lot of people are adding coconut oil to a lot of things. Be very delicious. It is saturated fat. It's got a nice flavor. A little bit, we should not be putting it into everything that we make. Saturated fat contribute to heart disease. They're solid. They can build up in the arteries of our heart, narrowing those vessels that are trying to feed our heart. So the next which is good is unsaturated. The unsaturated fats are monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. Monounsaturated fats are canola, olive oil, peanut oil. So the dressings that Jerry just made included olive oil and peanut oil. Two monounsaturated fats, plant-based, heart health. The other saturated fat is polyunsaturated fat. Polyunsaturated that is things like sesame seed oil, corn oil, saffron oil. And these are also good. The other thing about polyunsaturated fat is they contain two types of fat that are called essential acids, omega-3 and omega-6. You heard of them? So these are considered to be healthy, maybe help to reduce the concept called inflammation which is just the result of stress on our body, the byproduct of different things. That could be a whole nother show, just inflammation. Omega-3 and omega-6 fat acids help to keep this process in check. The sesame oil is a good example of the bills. Fish, olives, nuts, the good source of these essential fat acids. And so what should I tell for Holly and so much longer for margin? So bottom line, need fat, okay. don't be afraid of it. Go more towards okay. those plant-based fat. Ease up, up on the animal fat. Drizzle some olive oil, or some olive oil on vegetables. If you like butter, fit the amount. And as far as animal meat that will contribute some fat, well, two or three times a week, definitely have some meat sources like chicken, have plenty of fish, buy some meat-based protein. Get chicken in that salad as well. So the chickpeas are a great source of fiber, a source of protein too. So a lot of great things about the dressings we're going to try in about a second. And the salad itself is also very hot in nutrient. With the tomatoes, the cucumbers, the celery, romaine lettuce. So you could add the protein to it on it, some shrimp, a piece of salmon, turn it into a low price, delicious, and high in nutrients, high in flavor. Any quick questions about any of that? The basis of canola oil is the rate to eat. Jerry? I'm here. Basis. Oh. Um, Jerry, the base of canola oil, is it the rapeseed? Yes, uh, I. Uh, it is flax, I believe. Oh, okay. Is that something we might have to look up? Yeah, good question. It would be a mono. Yep, yep, canola oil is a mono on Thatcher. Three monos, olive oil, canola, and peanut. Exactly. Peanut too? Yeah. Yes. Palm kernel oil. Those are two saturated um, plant-based. So we want to go see on them even with the It is tofu soy. I can't hear anything. 
it's more about not having a conjunction supplement. If you're having natural soy-based food, that's okay. But eating soy supplements, soy supplements, uh, some cancers are estrogen. They're, they're hormone receptors. I might not have that. But soy would be phytoestrogen. So I think that we are out of time. So thank you for visiting with Jerry and I for this episode of Nutritious and Delicious. And the show is devoted to helping you to prepare healthy foods at low cost, simple, easy, delicious. You can get today's recipe and any other recipes on healthyplymouth.org. And this show has been brought to you in collaboration between the Plymouth Center for Active Living, HealthyPlymouth.org, and PACT. And Jerry Levine, thank you so much. Thank you, Marcia. It was nice uh, doing a presentation with you. Looking forward <laughs> to the next one. The next one in May. In May. Please, please come and visit us in May. Bye. Bye. Bye.